Dang, I was hoping one no class today. <laughs> well, y'all already had two days on the video. Y'all holler fellow all day. Yeah, huh? Hey, the damn fellow all day. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's President's Day. But the TCC don't observe it. What? Yeah, I you looked know. it up because I was I was looking for a day off too. Jesus. Uh, yeah, but TCC doesn't observe it, so got to go ahead and have class. And, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, we already had two days that we didn't do any new material. I thought it was just one. You did two back-to-back, -back, so. Yep. It'll be all right. It's some shootout to be happy, huh? Uh, you, and you knew it, and you ain't tell nobody, but it's all right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, good oh, afternoon. Hmm? I thought that was the plan. <laughs> Ain't messing up no good plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So good afternoon to everybody. Hope all is well. Hope everybody's doing all right. Good afternoon. How you doing? How you doing? So you look a little slack. A lot of people might have thought it ain't no school today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I would love to have taken advantage of it, but it's not on TCC's calendar, so. Hey, one guy, I, don't, I don't know. Who we starting with today? 4 1. Yeah, 4 1. You know, uh, last week we didn't do anything new, but the week before we had closed out chapter 10. It goes to chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 10, then chapter 4. So that's where we are now, yep. chapter 4. So, yep, chapter 4 is graphing. So we will be graphing by what we call the Cartesian coordinate plane. It's made up of two axes, your x-axis, which is your horizontal axis, y-axis, which is your vertical axis, where the intersect is your origin, uh, coordinates of your origin, zero, mm -hmm. zero. All right, um, they're split up into four quadrants going counterclockwise, quadrant one, two, three, and four. Quadrant one, in order to get into quadrant one, you have to make two positive moves. Quadrant mm -hmm. two, negative, then positive. Quadrant three, two negative moves. Quadrant four, positive and negative. Also, I didn't mention that, you know, your origin is in the middle. Everything above the origin is positive. Everything below the origin is negative. Everything to the right of the origin is positive. Everything to the left of your origin is negative. Mm -hmm. Hold up. I had me a thing already made up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got. I bought me some graphing paper last year when I was in the basics of it. Mm -hmm. I bought me some graphing paper, but all right, all right. So we'll be graphing what we call ordered pairs. Call ordered pairs because the order matters. X will always be first, then Y. So your horizontal move, then your vertical move. Or in other words, uh, or another way of thinking about it, you can say, you know, you walk to the elevator, go down, you run, then jump. Um, with just the simple fact that uh, X comes before Y in the alphabet, but it's always your horizontal move first, then your vertical move. Somebody said something in chat. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Well, we, we were supposed to write all our answers down to everything. How we did um, it. For your test. Um, yeah, for your test. Not for your homework, just for your test. But but for my test. But for every single problem. Because I know you said uh, you As much as possible. Calculate. As much as possible. You, you may not have to do every single problem, every single yeah, step. Yeah. I know a lot of stuff you said was... Um, um, you know, we could do use the calculator. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but you guys had some steps that you should have been doing and stuff. So it just depends on what the nature of the problem is that you were, you know, dealing with at the time. You know, every problem is a little different. Hmm? I'm trying to think that I turned in my test. This will be the first test or second test we're talking about now. Oh, wait, any, or are you talking about what have we done up to this point? Yeah, is this have 
Yeah, yeah chapter 10, 10. Chapter 10 was our second test. And that's not due until the 27th. Yes. Uh-huh. But the first test we, we were supposed to turn in. Um oops, I'm gonna have to get that. I'm gonna have to get that to you because I didn't turn okay. in no work. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's look at graphing these. I'm gonna erase this stuff and then walk through it. So Mm -mm -mm. Um, I guess I can leave it there. Yes. Um, all right, so let's look at the first point two five. All right, so there are two positive moves. So you always start at your origin, and we're going to go right to up five. And so that's how we get to that point of two five. So okay, I'm always, sorry, I missed it. We did start what? Start your origin and go to okay. the right two, up five. One, two. That's what that's okay, how we okay. got here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so that puts us in quadrant one. Remember, two positive moves put you in quadrant one. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Two, five. <laughs> okay. Go up two, all right? To the right, no, right two, up five. It's always your X move first, horizontal move first, then your vertical move. Horizontal moves first. Mm -hmm. and then vertical move. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said right first. So we went to one, two, then we went up one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And I but put it right here. Left. Now we mm -hmm. went up and over, didn't we? Went to the right two, up five. Oh, you was over here. Yeah, I'm over here, Graphic. Lord, how much? I'm on the wrong one. One, two, one, <laughs> so we on positive. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm for the next one. I'm trying to make my graph while we're doing this. So I'm getting behind because I'm trying to draw my graph out. Mm -hmm. Don't grab, you, you have the points as we talk about it, but. Um, right, graph, that's why I wanted to have my graph there so mm -hmm. I can keep. So, like I said, I was drawing that, but um, I'm getting there. Okay, wait a minute. Ooh. Okay, the negative mm. is the opposite. Right. Okay. So that'll be right there. Over two, up five. Okay. I had to get so that'll put us in off. quadrant. You said that'll put us in quadrant. Ah. Yep. One. One. That's a one. Mm -hmm. Well, is Roman numeral one? Okay. It, it's I, quadrant but you know two. Roman numeral. Yes, yeah, Roman number one. Right. one quad, quadrant. Okay, that's quadrant one. And quadrant two is right across from quadrant one. Yeah, this is one, two, four, two, three, four. All right. So looking at that next point, we got negative one, negative three. Always start at your origin. This time we're gonna go left one, down three. Okay. Because they're both negative. Negative Left one. one, down three. Okay, Negative. two, three. Mm -hmm. Okay. That puts us in quadrant three. Okay, got that so far. Okay. Next one. Negative four, two. Start your origin. Left mm -hmm. four, up two. That's a positive two. Four. It's a positive two. And that puts us in quadrant two. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth point, start at your origin, is positive one. So we go to the right one and then negative, we go down five. Okay. One, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And it puts one, us in two, quadrant four. four. 
So that would be a negative. What do you mean that would be a negative? What are we talking about? What? Okay, you went down one, you start here at one, then you came down five. Uh huh. So, so is that that's negative? No. Okay, I see what I did wrong. No, no, I see what I did wrong. Okay. All right. Okay. Questions? Any questions before we go to that next point? Three zero. All right. So now three zero means I go to the right three, but then I don't go up or down because Y is zero. And that puts me right here on the X axis. So you don't go into any quadrant. It's just the X axis. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. X axis. So that's um, three zero of the X axis. Okay. All right, and then the other one is on the y-axis. So you don't move left to right for x because it's zero, but you just go up three and that'll put you right here on the y-axis. All right, questions, questions, questions. Yes, okay, wait a minute. So we was here. I went up one, two, three. So it stopped right here. Okay. Right here. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the X was zero. So we don't move X. left to right. And we just move up three. Okay. This way I'm lost it when mm -hmm. it's positive. To, okay. If it says a negative, like let's say a negative four. So we would go to our left. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I'm, mm -hmm. I thought I was. So it's always your X move first and then your Y move. And whether you go right or left depends on if it's a negative or positive number. Okay. All right. Questions on any of those six points before we take it to the next exercise. So you did, when it was a three zero, you still went in here and moved this way. When it was a zero, we started here. You always start at your origin. Right. Always. Mm -hmm. so, so when it was three zero, you go to the right three. Remember your move, your X move is right. always. Right. But then we could not go up or down because Y was zero. Y was zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why it just stayed there on the on the x-axis. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions on any points before we go to the next thing? We're gonna grab some more in a second, but. I think I comprehend that much. Okay, okay. sounds good. So solutions is the next thing to talk about. And an ordered pair is a solution of an equation. If the equation is true after the ordered pair is plugged in, we talked about that before when we talked about your regular solutions. But this time we have an X and a Y that we're gonna plug into the equation. So uh, I'll let you write it down. They got to write it down for going further. Let's say ordered. Ordered yes. pair. Ordered pair, yes. Mr. Tucker, this is a new lesson. Yeah, 4.1. Mm -hmm. 4.1, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we have this equation here, 4x minus 3y equal to negative 2, and they give us the order pair of 1, 2, and they want to see is this order pair a solution for this equation? Always remember the X is first, Y is second. So you plug those values in respectively for those variables. 
or for those respective variables. So four times one minus three times two, plug in one for X, two for Y. And you said always plug in Y, uh, which one first? X is always first and then is Y. Okay, so my example. Okay, four x minus three y equals. So, so x is always first. Y, okay. Um. Yep. So then you go ahead and multiply it out. Four times one is four. Three times two is six. Four minus six is negative two. So we see we have negative two is equal to negative two. And that is true. So that means that yes, it is a solution. Mm All right, so there are infinitely amount of solutions to a linear equation, and that line represents all of the solutions. So every solution is a point on the line. So when we go to graph our lines, which is what we're gonna do in a second, that line represents every solution or every ordered pair that is a solution for that equation. So the ordered pair one, two would be a point on this line that is created. Okay. Mm -hmm. It would be a what? A point. A point, okay. Yep, on this line. So it would be a point somewhere on this line. Okay. Be a point in the graph. Mm-hmm. The graph. Mm -hmm. Now scroll up and the rest of the copy. All right, so let's do it again to make sure we're good. So this time our equation is y equal to 3x minus 5. And we have two points that we want to test to see if they are solutions or not. First point is 2, 3. Second point, 3, 4. And so to the left is plugging in the ordered pair of two, three. To the right is plugging in the ordered pair of three, four. So once again, don't forget the first value is your x, second value is your y. So in two, three, that means x is going to be two, y is going to be three. And so I just plug them in according to this right here. So that's three equal to three times two minus five. Can't find my register. Egg on dog. So on the right side, three times two is six. Six minus five is one. So see, we have three equal to one, which is uh, not true. So that means it's not a solution. The next order pair, three, four. Plug them in in the same fashion. Four is y, three is x. Three times three is nine, nine minus five is four. So we have four equal to four. So that, that is a solution because that's a true statement. So can I ask a question? I know it's gonna sound crazy. Mm -hmm. So on my left, you get mm -hmm. three equal to one and it's not a solution. So if it was two of the same numbers, mm -hmm. it would be true. If it's not, it's not true. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay.
All right. Are we good on this? Anybody still copying before we go to the next thing? All right. So when we go uh, to the next piece, which is actually graphing linear equations, not just graphing points, but graphing linear equations, uh, we have three different methods in which we will be able to do so. Not going to cover all three of them today, but we see that uh, four one is just creating the XY chart. Um, and in four two, we have intercepts and slopes that we will discuss and that will help us to be able to graph a linear equation. Doesn't matter which one, which method you choose. Um, either way, they'll still create the same line. Uh, the only thing that may dictate whether you choose a method or not is if you're in math lab and say graph using intercepts, then of course you have to use your intercepts. But if you're just graphing stuff on your own, either one of the methods will be fine. All right. Oh, also we're graphing linear equations. So that means uh, we should be getting lines, should be getting lines. When we use these methods, we are looking to graph lines, straight lines. Let me erase some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and erase this. All right, so let's look at the first method, y equal to 2x plus 1. And we want to create an xy chart. Y equals right. 2x plus 1. All right, so notice how I gave you that little note that you choose your x values. In math lab, you only have to graph two points. Um, I'm just used to always graphing um, three points just because of how I used to, you know, back in the day when we had to use, you know, chisels and stone tablets, we always used three points. We didn't, you know, use a computer and everything like that. So, um, yeah, so that's why I always used to graph in three points. And math lab, math lab only needs two points. All right, but well, three points got me here, so I'm not going to deviate from it. So graphing more points is nothing but more practice, so we'll be all right. So once again, you choose these X values. Now, just remember that whatever you choose, you're going to have to graph it. You're going to have to calculate with it. So if you choose 150 and 1 million, just know you're going to have to graph that. So you don't want to choose anything crazy. Notice I chose negative 1, 0, and 1. Now, that's what I'm choosing for X. You plug those in for X and find the corresponding Y value. So my equation is y is equal to 2x plus 1. So plug in negative 1 for x and calculate. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 1. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Uh -oh. Wait a minute. Oh, I don't miss something. Hold up. OK, um, so we're going to do use that very equation to solve this whole chart, right? This 2x plus 1 going to solve the whole chart, right? Mm -hmm. OK, so it's going to be, for the first one, we're going to do 2 times negative 1. So um, negative 1 is what we got. x, the x is represented. OK, I see it now. I had to look at it. I was writing something else. OK, mm -hmm. negative 2 <laughs> 1 equals negative one, and that's what gave us our negative one on the y side. Mm -hmm. So this one here is the x side, x the y side. Okay. All right, do the same thing for that zero. For that zero is mm -hmm. going to be two times. So zero. the zero would be a one, two? One. It would be one for y, right? When x is zero, one y. For y. y. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you plug in positive one. When x is one, y is equal to three. Mm 
Mm -hmm. All right, any questions on how we got these points before we go to graph? So now you grab those three points and that will create your line. So to the left one, down one is this point right here. Okay. Don't move anywhere for X because X is zero, then go up one as this point right here. And then to the right one up three is this point right here. Okay. Any questions on the line? In one and up three, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I see my you line. You make it look so easy up, up here, but when I go to look at it on the thing, it's gone. I see my <laughs> line. Yeah, I see it. So, so remember I said it doesn't matter what values you choose for X, um, as long as you have room to graph it. And so the reason being, notice how we have arrows at the end of these lines or end of this line, that means it goes into infinity in those directions. So let's say if I would have chose X to be 20, X being 20 would have been over here, but it would have gave me a point that was over here that would have still connected with that line, giving me the same incline, the same slant. Same thing as if I would have chose X to be negative 100, that would have been way over there, but it would have gave me a line, a point way down here that still would connect it with this line. So no matter what you choose, you're still gonna create or generate the same line. This is that you have to have the ability to create the room to actually plot these points. So that's why you wanna choose something small and uh, so you'll be all right. Okay. Questions before we do another one? All right. So let's look at this next one. This time we have a fraction involved. You know, notice I have a couple of notes up here. So I want us to be okay with what's going on when we have a fraction. Um, because you can still choose any value you want, but you do want to be strategic when you have a fraction involved because you don't want to have to graph a decimal or a fraction if you don't have to. And most of the time it can be prevented. So notice we have y equal to negative three fifths x plus two. So the kind of values that we want to choose for x are values that are going to be multiples of your denominator. Our denominator is five. So these are values that the five can divide into evenly. And so the values that we would choose in this case would be 5, 10, 15, 20, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, something along those lines so that 5 can divide into it evenly. Those are the values we're going to choose for x. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was a 7 down there, we have 7, 14, 28, 21. You know, things that 7 can divide into 11, 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. You're looking for numbers that the um, 11 can divide into. So whatever your denominator is, you're looking for numbers that that denominator can divide into evenly. Those would be the values that you would choose for x. And so notice I chose negative 5, 0, and 5. 0 is always good to choose because, you know, multiply anything times 0 will give you 0. Uh oh, wait a minute. Yeah. So before we go to plug-ins, everybody okay with what I've done? So now remember, we wouldn't have these values right here yet. You have to calculate to get those values. The only thing you've chosen up to this point is negative five, zero, and five. So we, we would be chose goals on our own as well? The negative five, zero, and five? We chose the X's on our own as you, well? You always choose your own X's, yep. Those are my suggestions. You could have done five, 10, and 15 if you wanted to. As long okay. as the denominator, which is five, can divide into those numbers evenly you have good values okay all right so over here is me calculating my y so um we have three fifths negative three fifths times negative five plus two now if you want you can cancel out first i just went ahead and multiply so you can see all the steps so here negative three times negative five is positive 15 five times one is 15 so that's, i mean five so that's how i got 15 over five Oh, you went too this fast. Is, this is <laughs> the one underneath the five. Mm -hmm. All I did was multiply that out. 
And that's how I got 15 over five. You multiply these two right here and got this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that right there is five. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm blue with you. <laughs> okay, so when, when we multiply, we, we do the two fives, are we canceling out? If, you, know, you could have if you wanted to. I didn't do it. I just multiplied. Now I'm going to cancel out here and go to, in, you know, 15 divided by five is three. So 15, how you get 15 over five? What gave us 15? Right here. Because he said oh, three yeah. times 15. You multiply? Yep. Yeah. Multiply three times five is 15. Then you said the five times. Oh, five. just multiply across. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You're getting too deep. You're going too deep. <laughs> uh, yeah. 15 divided by five is three. And that was, was five. I should have saw that one. So five, <laughs> I was one. like, look, I, I drew the arrows and everything. I was like, okay. <laughs> Okay, but we don't went back to those the arrows. Grade. I'm thinking I got to multiply 25 times 25 plus negative two. <laughs> I was going all over everywhere with it. But I, I hadn't even paid the arrows no man. <laughs> okay, y'all bad with me. I had a rough holiday weekend. Okay, so that's five. So y will be five. Yes. All so right. when x is negative five, y is five. Okay, gotcha. So we're gonna start with the next one. I, I got it. Yeah. All right. So it's gonna be then, um, yep. Negative three fifths times zero is zero. Negative three. Zero plus two is two. So when x is zero, y is two. Zero. See, so women. Oh, oh, hold on. Hmm? I was uh, going here so everybody can copy. So we already know that's zero. All right, are we good with the um, order pairs? Talk to me, everybody. Wait, let's see that I do that right. Okay, yeah, okay, negative 15, okay. All right, going up a little bit more. So that one equals, that last one gonna equal negative one. Mm-hmm. Oh shoot, there it go right there. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think I tried too negative hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it says I'm about negative one. Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. It hadn't scrolled. Um. Mm -hmm. oh, I forgot you got that thing at the bottom of the screen. You won't move it. Yep. I'm sorry. It's all good. You just got to remind me sometimes. Plus zero. Wait a minute. Negative five. Graphing those three points, uh, mm -hmm. you go to the left five, up five. So that's this point right here. Left side, up five. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. And you go up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one, zero, two. So since X is zero, you don't move left to right. You just go up two. Okay. And then the next one, you go to the right five, down one, one two, three, which is right five. here. 
Oh shoot, I did that wrong. Did I suppose it went? I suppose it went zero and up too. Not yes, cross, yes. That second point two. is yeah zero for x. So you don't move right or left. You just go up to up to the two. I don't know. So me going over to the two. What 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 makes that wrong for me to go from the zero? Uh, if you the only way you can move to the right or left is x. X would have had them in two. Okay, that's the catch right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, because my line was I was like wondering why my line wasn't looking right <laughs> when uh, I'm crossing up. So okay, yeah. so that's what I got to remember. Okay. Okay. Got my rule and everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's well, a nice line. I think I, I commend you on on the accuracy. Just you know, as long as you make sure you're accurate in math lab, because that's where the grades go come in. That's where it counts. <laughs> that's where it counts. Yeah, and so you can't use a ruler there. So, uh, but you know, as long as you got your right points, it'll make a straight line. But, you can't use a ruler, but it shows you the line. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I say as long as you got the right points, it'll make a straight uh -huh, line. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It shows. Uh, I'm using the ruler just so I can put a nice straight line there. That's all about you. Uh huh. Not a problem. Put my line no. be nice and straight, and neat and pretty. <laughs> okay all right are we good can we go to yes sir okay. all right so that's the first method we'll talk a little bit about the second method and uh we'll get to the third method on the next class so what was the name of that method was that mess that one was the was xy that? chart remember i told you right here those are your three methods you got your xy chart okay so that's the first method slope. okay yep. mm -hmm. which is the xy chart okay yep. creating the xy chart by choosing your x values plug them in get your y values yes. Okay. All right. Here's that second okay. method. Wow. Using our intercepts. Chart. So your x-intercept, and that, that is stepping into 4-2 as well. We're not even going to try to finish 4-2, but I do want to just go ahead and talk about intercepts. Um, uh, your x-intercept is where the graph intercepts across this, the x-axis. Your y-intercept is where the graph intercepts across this, the y-axis. Now there's a characteristic that holds true for all x intercepts, and that is y is always equal to zero. And then what always holds true for all y intercepts is that x is always equal to zero. Hmm? What did you just say? I'll say he it's was right good, here. but he went. <laughs> it's right here. The y intercept for the graph crosses the x y. is always zero. And Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everything I said is right here. I was just saying it. I heard you, but I ain't... wait a minute. Okay. See, I'll be trying to intercept. Can you just, while we waiting, can you go over that with me one more time? While we waiting for everybody to get it wrote down? We ain't waiting for no everybody. We waiting for you. No, I'm just not. <laughs> All right, so uh, the graph, where the graph intercepts <laughs> <laughs> or crosses. Y'all see how she tried to put that on everybody else? Like, <laughs> like, me and Miss Glover on the same page. Like we yeah. on the same page, yeah. right, Miss Glover? <laughs> <laughs> So the graph intercepts across is the x-axis. That's your x-intercept. So that's right here. Okay. So you when you say it crosses over. Right here. At this point, that's where it intercepts the x-axis. Okay. That's your x-intercept. And then okay. your y-intercept is where the graph intercepts the y-axis. Okay. And the zero part is for some reason, I'm just not... Um, Understanding what it what they what would you say? Well, you know, we have an ordered pair. There's an x and a y, right? Okay. So it's saying for your x in the cell, y is always zero. And then for your y in the cell, x is always zero. And that's what I was showing right here. Okay. Because it's on the line. Because it's on the line. The point, the main the point, main middle point is zero. So mm -hmm. because it's on the line, it's gonna the y is gonna all it's gonna always be zero mm -hmm. on that point when it's on the line. Okay, mm -hmm. so 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 but it 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 
determines what side of the chart it's going to be on, that the zero going to be on when it's the X and the Y. Okay. Yes. I think yes. I got it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I just figured that out. Okay. It, it opened up a light bulb with a, okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Not a problem. All right. So everybody done writing? So don't want to go up if somebody's still writing that stuff. All right, let me erase some of this stuff so we can walk through it. So here's our uh, equation, huh? Oh, I thought you were going to erase that while I'm writing. Okay. Erase what? What? Where you at? What you mean? Oh, I'm graphing by using. Oh no 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 no! I'm erasing some of the the the, the calculations and stuff so we can walk through it. That's oh okay okay okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So our equation is 2x plus 3y okay. equal to 12. And it, it wants to graph using our intercepts. Doesn't matter which one of your intercepts that you find first. So we have y and x. Uh, x intercepts, y intercepts, excuse me. I always find my x intercept first. Once again, it doesn't matter. All right, so now if we're gonna find our x intercept first, which is what I'm working with on this left side, first thing you wanna do is let y be equal to zero. It's understood that all x intercepts always have y as zero, okay? So if that's the case, go ahead and plug in zero for y. What are we talking about right here? Plugging in zero for y, three times zero, is zero, zero. Okay. Yep. and that'll leave us with 2x equal to 12. Now we can solve for x by dividing both sides by two. So that'd be six. Yep, and that is our x intercept, zero, uh, six, zero. Okay. Any problems with that before we go to the next one? Find out our y intercept. So, so I why like as you said that the y intercept was already determined. So it's gonna be zero on zero on the x. I mean on the six on the x side and zero on the y side, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we making a chart because we're gonna graph. Do I need to make my little chart on the side this time? Uh, well, you're only gonna do two points. Okay. Um, so we're gonna do this, this point right here. Then we're gonna do this point right here and grab those two points. Okay. So Cause you only have two intercepts. Zero and X is six. Okay, got that. All right. So, uh, all right. So now if you're gonna find a Y intercept, we let X be equal to zero. Okay. So two times X is zero. That leaves us with three Y equal to 12. Then we divide both sides by three. Y is equal to four. So be careful here because X was zero and then Y. So that means X is gonna come first in your ordered pairs writing. So that'd be zero, four. Questions, questions, questions. Okay. Any problems? Everybody good before we go to graph? We are still in, in 4.2, right? Yes, this is 4.2. Okay. Uh -huh. So when we get ready to graph, it's going to be. All right, so we graph those two points. Six zero is going to be to the right six. Don't go up or down because zero. Four five six. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then zero four, you just go up four. One two three four. Okay.
Okay. Okay. All right, questions on that? Okay. All right, everybody ready to try it again? All right, so same thought process. I'll uh, leave some of it already there because we already know what we're doing. So x in this up, we have 5x minus 4y equal to 20. I want to find my x in this up. Start off by letting y be equal to 0. And that cancels out right there at 4 times 0. And that gives me 5x equal to 20. So divide both sides by five. Five's cancel. X is equal to four, so that ordered pair is zero, four. All right, so then do the same thing for your y intercept. Let you let x be equal to 0, 5 times 0, 0. That leaves you with negative 4y equal to 20. Make sure you don't lose that negative. So you divide both sides by negative 4. y is equal to negative 5. So we have our ordered pair of 0, negative 5. All right, any questions? Everybody good? So you graph your two points, four, zero, you go to the right four. Two points, one, two, three, four, okay. And then go down five for zero, negative five. One, two, three, four, five, negative five, okay. Excuse me, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, questions, any questions? All right, so the last two things and then we'll call it a day. Everybody good with that last problem? 
So the last two things don't call for calculation, just uh, observation of what you have. And I kind of ran that together. Let me see if I can pull it down real quick. I don't like how that's all close like that. All right, so horizontal lines and vertical lines. So horizontal line, notice that it has y equal to five. So each one of our equations up to this point has had, has had x and y involved. This time it's just y. So when you just see y, no x at all, just see y, this means that y is always that number. So in this case, it's five. And x could be anything. And what that's going to do is create a horizontal line at five when you go to plot your points. So no calculation, just observation. You recognize that the only thing I see is Y. I don't see X. So Y is going to always be, when I go to create my XY chart, Y is going to always be whatever that number is. In this case, it's five. So notice five is going all the way down for Y. X can be anything. And then when you go to graph that, it will produce um, a horizontal line at five. Horizontal line at five. So you're saying we just plug in any numbers and then graph it? Mm -hmm. As long as y is 5, it will give you a horizontal line at 5. Okay. So that's the only thing that you have to hit, hold, hold on to is the fact that y is going to be 5. This statement says y is equal to 5. So no matter what you do with x, y has to be equal to 5. And that's why 5 is going all the way down the line here. It don't make no difference. What numbers I put on X side? Because all of them are going to be on this horizontal line. But you want to try to keep the numbers kind of low and simple, right? Well, always. Yeah, always. You want to be as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Let me check that out on my graph. Negative one. Um, questions, questions, questions. Oh, there's an equal sign. What did it? Oh, that must have came from my. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up, Professor. I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to graph it. Mm -hmm. that, that right there. Okay, negative one, that's gonna be on my x axis. So it'll be negative one. Then I go up five. Okay. All right, you can go ahead. I, I was one looking right. Okay. You go ahead. All right. So vertical line, same thought process, except this time we have x. So x is always whatever number you have. I see it. I see and um y can be anything. And you'll create a vertical line. The vertical is the same thing, it's just that. Okay. Okay. All right, any questions, concerns, comments, anything, anybody? All right, everybody straight, everybody straight. Okay, so next class we'll get into slopes. That's still 4.2, that's the rest of 4.2. And um, yep, close that out next class and then go from there. Um, but if you guys are good, I'm good. Make sure you stay on top of this math lab work. Um, like you said, I, that next due date is the 27th. 
And also, don't forget, uh, what was I about to say? If anybody had any issues with that last due date and stuff like that, always make sure you get in contact with me individually so we can discuss a plan to get you caught up and everything like that. All right. So you guys have a good one. Be safe. And I will see you next class. All right, Tessa, you have an awesome rest of your day. Thanks. You do the same. Take care. All right, class. Okay, see you. All right, take care.